Chapter 27, One of Us is Lying, Bronwyn, Tuesday, November 6, at 7.30 p.m. I'm not supposed to talk to Eli, so last night I texted Miss McCauley to link to the Tumblr post that Addie Cooper and I read together. I told her that it was weird, what was weird about it. Then I waited, a frustratingly long time, until I got a text back from her after school. Thank you, I've informed Eli, but he asked that you don't involve yourself further. That's all. I wanted to throw my phone across the room. I'll admit it. I spent most of the last night fantasizing that Addie's bombshell would get Nate out of jail immediately. While I realized that I, that was ridiculously naive, I still think I could deserve more than a brush off. Even though I can't wrap my brain around what it means because Jake Rejordan, Rio Duran, if I had to pick the most random possible person to be involved in this, it would still be it still wouldn't have been him and involved how exactly did he write the whole tumblr or just that one post did he frame nate did he kill simon cooper shot down almost immediately we could have we couldn't have he said monday night jake was a football football practice when Addie called him he might have left i insisted so cooper called louise to confirm louise says no cooper reported jake was leading passing drills the whole time I'm not sure we can hinge the entire investigation on Luis's memory, though. That boy's killed a lot of brain cells over the years. He didn't even question why Cooper was asking. Now I'm in my room with Maeve and Addie, putting dozens of colored post-its on the wall to summarize everything we know. It's very law and order, except none of it makes sense. Someone planted phones in our backpacks. Simon was poisoned during the detention. Bronwyn, Nate, and Cooper, Addie, and Mr. Avery were in the room. Car accident distracted us. Jake wrote the at least one Tumblr post. Jake and Simon were friends once. Leah hates Simon. Aiden Wu hates Simon. Simon had a thing for Keely. Simon had a violence-loving alter ego online. Simon was depressed. Janae seems depressed. Janae and Simon stopped being friends. My mother voice floats up the stairs. Bronwyn, Cooper's here. Mom already loves Cooper so much that she doesn't protest all of us getting together again, even though Robin's legal advice is to keep our distance from one another. Hey, Cooper says, not the least bit breathless from bounding up the stairs. I can't stay long, but I've got some good news. Luis thinks he might have found that car. His brother called a buddy at a repair, pay, repair place in Eastland, and they have a red Camaro come through with fender damage a few days after Simon died. I got the license plate and the phone number. He searches through a backpack and hands me a torn envelope with numbers scrawled across the back. I guess you can pass this along to Eli, huh? Maybe there's something there. Thanks, I say gratefully. Cooper runs his eyes over the wall. This helping? Addie sits back on her hunches with frustrated noise. Not really, it's just a collection of random facts. Simon this, Janae that, Leah this, Jake that. Cooper frowns and crosses his arms, leaning toward forward for a better look at the wall. I don't get the Jake part at all. I can't believe he actually sit around and write that damn Tumblr. I just think he blabbed to the wrong person or something. He taps a finger on a post-it with all of our names on it, and I keep wondering, why us? Why did we get dragged into this? Are we just collateral damage, like Nate said, or is there some specific reason we're proud of this? I tilted my head at him, curious. Like what? Cooper shrugs. I don't know. Take you and Leah. This, it's a small thing, but what if something is started in a dominant effect? Or me? He scans the wall and settles on a post-it. Aiden Wu, maybe. He got out of for cross-dressing and was hiding the fact I'm gay. But that entry was changed, I remind him. I know, and that's weird too, isn't it? Why we, why get rid of a perfectly good piece of gossip that's true and replace it with one that's not? I can't shake the feeling that this is personal, you know? The way that Tumblr kept going, everything going, edging people on about us, I wish I understood why. Addie tugs on one of her earrings, her hand trembles, and when she speaks, her voice does too. Things were pretty personal between me and Jake, I guess. And maybe he was jealous of you, Cooper. But Bronwyn and Nate? Why would he involve them? Collateral damage. We've all been affected, but Nate's gotten worse about it by far. If Jake's to blame, that doesn't make sense. But then again, none of this does. I should go, Cooper says. I'm meeting Luis. I managed to smile. Not Chris. Cooper returned a smile and a little stained. We're still figuring things out. Anyway, let me know if this car stuff help is helpful. He leaves and Maeve gives up crossing over to the spot near the bed that Cooper just vacated. She shuffles post-its on the wall, putting four of them into a square. Drake wrote at least one Tumblr post. Leah hates Simon. 
Aiden Wu hates Simon, Janae seems depressed. These are the most connected people. They've either got reason to hate Simon, or we already know they're involved in some way. Some pretty unlikely. She taps on Aiden's names, and some have big red flags against them. She points to Jake and Janae, but nothing clear cut. What are we missing? We all stare at the post-its in silence. You can learn a lot, a, a lot about a person when you have his license plate and phone number, his address, for example, and his name, where he goes to school. So if you wanted to, you could hang out in the parking lot of the school before it tragically and wait for a wreck marriage to arrive, theoretically, or actually. I meant to turn the numbers Cooper gave me over to Mrs. McCauley so she could pass them along to Eli, but I'm thinking about the terse text. I've informed Eli, but he asks that you don't involve yourself further. Would Eli even take me seriously? He's he's the one who first mentioned the car accident was suspicious and spending all of his time trying to keep Nate in juvenile detention center. We might consider this nothing but a pesky distraction. Anyway, I'm just coping things out. That's what I tell myself as I enter Eastland High's parking lot. And the start and they start classes 40 minutes before we do, and I can still get back to Bayview and plenty of time for the first bell. It's stuffy in, in the car, and I lower both the front seat windows as I pull into an empty spot and turn the car off. Thing is, I need to be doing stuff if I don't think about Nate too much. About where he is, about what he's going through, and the fact that he won't talk to me. I mean, I understand he has limited communication options, obviously, but they're non, not non-existent. I asked Miss McCauley if I could visit, and she told me Nate didn't want me there, which stings. She thinks he's he wants to protect me, but I'm not so sure. He's pretty used to people giving up on him, and I, maybe he's decided to do it with me first. A flash, of, a flash of red catches my eye. An ancient Camaro with a shiny fender parks in a, a few spaces away from me. A short, a short dark-haired boy gets out and hauls his backpack from the passenger seat, looping one strap over his shoulder. I didn't intend, intend to say anything, but he glances my way as he walks out, walks by my window, and before I can stop myself, I blurt out, Hey, he pauses, curious brown eyes meeting mine. Hey, I know you. You're the girl from Bayview Investigation. Bronte, right? Bronwyn, I say. I've already blown my cover. Might as well go all in. What are you doing here? He's dressed like he's waiting for a 90s grunge comeback, in a flannel shirt and a pearl jam t-shirt. Um, my eyes get her to his car. I should just ask, right? What, that's what I came for, but now I'm actually talking to this boy. The whole thing seems ridiculous. What am I supposed to say? Hey, what's the deal with your oddly timed car accident at school you don't go to? Waiting for somebody? He wrinkles his brow at me. Do you know people here? Yeah, sort of. I know about your recent car repair anyway. Everybody's been talking about you guys. Weird case, huh? The kid who died? He was kind of weird, right? I mean, who even has an app like that and all the stuff they said on Mikel Powers? Random. He seems nervous. My brand chants, ask, 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 but my mouth won't obey. Well, see ya. He starts to move past my car. Wait, my voice unsticks and he pauses. Can I talk to you for a second? We were talking. We just were talking. Right, but I have an actual question for you. The thing is, when I said I was waiting for someone, I meant you. He's definitely nervous. Why wouldn't? Why would you be waiting for me? You don't even know me. Because of your car, I say. I saw you get into an accident in our parking lot the day Simon died. He pales and blinks at me. How do you, why do you think it was me? I saw your license plate. I lie. No need to sell out Luis's brother. The thing is, the timing was weird, you know, and now someone who's been arrested for something I'm sure he didn't do, and I wondered, did you happen to see anything or anyone strange that day? It would help. My voice catches and tears prick at my eyes. I blink them back and I try to focus. Anything you could tell me would help. He hesitates and steps back, looking towards the stream of kids funneling into school. I wait for him to back away and join them, but instead he crosses to the other side of my car, opens the passenger drawer, and climbs inside. I press a button to raise the window and turn to face him. So, he runs a hand through his hair. This is weird. I'm Sam, by the way. Sam Barton. Baron. Bronwyn Rojas. But I guess you already know that. Yeah, I've been watching the news and wondering if I should say something, but I didn't know if it meant anything. I still don't. He gives me a quick sideways glance, as though checking for signs of alarm. We didn't do anything wrong, like legal, as far as I know. My spine tingles up, and I just assured her, who's we? Me and my buddy. We had an accident on purpose. A guy paid us a thousand bucks each to do it. Said it was a prank. I mean, wouldn't you? 
The fender barely cost 500 to fix. The rest was pure profit. Someone? It's warm in the car and the window's up. My hands gripping the steering wheel are slick with sweat. I should turn the air conditioning on, but I can't move. Who? Do you know his name? I didn't, but... Yeah. He'd have brown hair and blue eyes, I blurred out. Yeah? Jake must have gotten away from Louise at some point after. Was it... Wait, I have a picture in here somewhere. I say fumbling through my backpack for my phone. I'm sure I look at the picture of a homecoming court in September. I don't need a picture, Sam says. I know who he is. Really? Like, you know his name? My heart is beating so fast I can see my chest moving. Are you sure he gave you the real name? He didn't give me any name. I figured it out later when I saw the news. I remember those first few stories with Jake's class picture next to Addie's. A, a lot of people thought it wasn't fair to show him, but I'm glad that they did. I have a homecoming picture pulled up now, and I hand it to Sam. Him, right? Jake or Jordan? He blinks at my phone, shakes his head, and his hands are back. No, that's not him. It was someone a lot more closely involved with the whole thing. My heart is about to explode. If it wasn't Jake, there's only one other boy with dark hair and blue eyes involved in the investigation closely. Closely involved, no less, and that's Nate. No, no, please, God, no. Who? My voice isn't even a whisper. Sam blows out a sigh and leans against the headrest. He's quiet for the longest seconds of my life until he says, it was Simon Keller.